hi, it's Olivia, and it's also summertime. <laughs> I hope everyone is having a great start to their summer, and hopefully this will just add to it with a nice little, actually not little, a, a big June book haul. So let's get started. Starting out, we have Empress Crowned in Red by Shannon Smart, and well, let me show you the spine. I'm a purple girl. I love this beautiful purple spine, and then even on the, the naked cover, this little detailing, so pretty. Uh, but this is the conclusion to Witches Steeped in Gold, and this is an enemies to comrades, back to enemies, a magical Jamaican inspired fantasy. Since it's the conclusion, I won't tell you too much about what it's about, but let me read you this blurb about Witches Steeped in Gold that says, a bloody and deadly delight. Witches Steeped in Gold puts power into the hands of black girls, the true beating heart of magic. And that was by Danielle Clayton. So definitely one to look out for and it's nice that we have a conclusion out. Next up is This Place is Beautiful by CCTN. And this cover is beautiful too, but anyway, while this story is also a nuanced look at identity and racism, it also has two very sweet and funny and heartfelt romances at its center. And one of those is a second chance romance with Margaret and her ex-boyfriend. This would also be a really good pick for fans of YA authors like Jandy Nelson or Tahira Mafi, and also if you're a fan of adult authors like Celeste Ng and Britt Bennett. Next up is The Blood Trader by Lynette Noni, and this is a finale. This is another conclusion to a dark fantasy trilogy, uh, the Prison Healer trilogy, and this is supposed to be perfect for fans of Shelby Mahurin's Serpent and Dove trilogy. And if you, if you're, this is, again, since it's a conclusion, I won't tell you too much about the details of this one's plot, but some praise for the trilogy by Sarah J. Mass says, Lynette Noni is a masterful storyteller, a must-read for any fantasy lover. This series is full of twists and that kind of edgier seat writing style, and it's also perfect for fans, and I find this one interesting especially, perfect for fans of an unreliable narrator. Next up, I have Rise of the Vicious Princess by C.J. Redwine, and C.J. is also also the New York Times bestselling author of the Ravenspire series. And this story, unlike the other ones being conclusions, this is the start to a new action-packed duology. And some of the many things that you'll find in here include political intrigue, smugglers, and also a sea monster. Who doesn't love a good sea monster? And next up is The Silence That Binds Us by Joanna Ho. And I was so excited to see that Joanna Ho has a novel because I was familiar with her debut picture book called Eyes That Kiss in the Corners. Uh, actually, I have it back here. I had to get my hands on it because it was so beautiful. This book and her second book, which was Eyes That Speak to the Stars. What I loved about this was not only the beautiful illustrations by Yung Ho, but the writing by Joanna Ho was so beautiful and poetic, and I just, it's really exciting to see then that she has this new book. If it's anything like that, the writing in her picture books, then this is bound to be a very beautifully, powerfully written story. And this book is filled with themes like mental health, anti-racism, and black and Asian solidarity. So there's a lot to look forward to from this one. Next up is Epically Earnest by Molly Horan, and this is lightly inspired by the importance of being earnest, and it keeps all the wit and charm from the original, but is also an updated story for lovers of young adult contemporary rom-coms. So this story follows Jane, who has a lot on her plate at, in her final year of high school as a senior. Of those things on her plate is trying to decide whether or not she should start looking for her biological family. She also is dealing with some internet fame stemming from when she was a baby, and she's also trying to navigate this epic crush that she has on her best friend's gorgeous cousin, Gwen. So if you like those heartfelt, charming contemporary stories with epic crushes and promposals and romances galore, then this will be the book for you. Next, I have The Name She Gave Me by Betty Coley, who is also the acclaimed author of Three Things I Know Are True. And this is a book written, let me show you, it's written in verse. So yeah, this is a beautiful novel written in verse about adoption, healing, identity, family, and so much more. And it's also an own voices story. And next I have A Year to the Day by Robin Benway. And I love how this cover, it looks like a, what is it, a, like a starry night that was in a time-lapse photo. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but it's cute, and Robin Benway is also also the National Book Award winner of her book, Far From the Tree. It is for all of you out there who like a good book 
to make you cry. This is told in reverse chronological order from a year after the main character's sister dies and it works its way back to the day of her death where some shocking truths are revealed. Next up is Ride With Me by Lucy Keating and tell me that this does not look like the epitome of a summertime read. Just everything about it is giving the vibe of a book that you pick up on the beach. But anyway, this is a coming of age story that speaks to themes of self-discovery and community and also has a delightful romance, of course, and it's got the enemies to lovers trope, if you're a fan of that one. And next up, I have The Dream Runners by Shiveta Takrar. Wow, look at how pretty that looks on the camera. Don't mind me getting a little distracted by how pretty it is. This is also from the author of the magical fantasy Star Daughter, which is another beautiful cover. This is set in our world and the subterranean kingdom of the half-serpent, half-human Nagas, and that's inspired by the author's own Hindu culture. And this also has a nice little slow burn first love romance for you. Next up is Cats and Jammer by Francesca Zappia, and she is also the author of some fan favorites like Made You Up and Eliza and Her Monsters. I definitely remember reading Eliza and Her Monsters a few years ago. So this one is actually perfect for horror fans and those who who, again, like unreliable narrators. This is a twisty read that impacts some serious themes with really suspenseful writing and inventive creative storytelling. And also throughout the book is some of the author's own black and white illustrations. Let me see if I can show you some. Yeah, I definitely remember this style. I just remember her writing is unique. I remember that from when I read Eliza and Her Monsters. So next up is A Little Bit Country by Brian D. Kennedy, and this is if Dumplin' and What If It's Us had a perfect book baby. And this is also inspired by a love for Dolly Parton. Who doesn't love Dolly Parton? <laughs> and in this story, not only will you get the main romance that goes on, but there's also a little star-crossed lovers romance happening in the background. So this just sounds like another good time, another great summer read. So next up is The Song That Moves the Sun by Anna Bright, and in this story there'll be two different romances that you can ship following two of our main characters, um, and this is also perfect for music lovers, and also especially so if you have an interest in astrology. And I just love, you could even see like the little detailing, the star constellations. I think it's super pretty. It goes on to the back too. And if that's your vibe, then you, you, ought to, you gotta get yourself a copy of this one. And we have come to the last book in this book haul, which is Blade Breaker by Victoria Aveyard. This is book two in the Realm Breaker trilogy. So in this story, the realm is descending further into chaos. We are getting even more epic battle scenes, villain romance, and you know, it's just the time to hop on with book two, then you'll be able to eagerly await the conclusion. So those are all the books that I have you today. Let me go and hold them one last time. Okay, there we go. I think not only were there a lot of books this this time, but there are some pretty some pretty hefty ones, like right on top with Empress crowned in red. They're pretty chunky. I love a good chunky book. But anyway, I would love to know what your summer reads are, what are your summer plans. Uh, if you're interested in any of the books that I talked about, definitely let me know, and there should be links in the description to all of them. Also feel free to reach out to your library if you're interested. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you in another video. Bye.